This cold doesn't arrive like a punch. It arrives like water. It seeps. It soaks. It settles. In northern and western Europe, 600 years ago, the ground didn't freeze clean. It stayed wet, dark, heavy. That wet ground didn't feel dangerous. It just kept taking, quietly, all night. At night, medieval families slept right above it. Stone walls sweating, air thick with damp. Beds that felt dry for an hour then turned cold again. This wasn't dry winter cold. Dry cold bites and lets go. Damp cold doesn't. In damp cold, you don't die quickly. You die because you never warm up again. And people knew this. Not in theory. In their bones. So they didn't chase warmth. They didn't try to heat the whole house. They built a system layers block small decisions to cut the paths heat could escape. Seven of them. Quiet. Practical. And the reason whole families survived nights that never truly ended. Warmth doesn't save you. Dry does. You lie down for the night. And it's not the blanket that feels cold. It's what's underneath. The ground hasn't frozen solid. It never does. It stays wet, dark, soft, patient. That wet earth pulls heat the way a sponge pulls water. Slow. Constant. Minute after minute. Sleep close to it and you open a direct exit for your body heat. Medieval families learned this the hard way, so the first thing they did wasn't to add more blankets. They lifted themselves away from the ground. A low wooden frame, a rough pallet, sometimes just enough height to break contact. Then came the layers underneath straw, dried grass, organic fill packed thick, replaced often. Not for comfort, for air. Air trapped inside dry fibers acts like a life jacket for heat. It slows conduction. It blocks moisture rising up into the bed. Wet ground conducts heat faster than air. That means it keeps pulling warmth out of your back all night long. This is why floor deposits matter to archaeologists' layers of organic litter and sweepings show people weren't ignoring the ground. They were managing it. You buy a heated mattress pad. They raised the bed and stuffed it with air. But cutting the ground was only the first lock. Because once moisture is slowed below you, the cold starts looking for another way in. And that's where the wind comes next. Because once the ground can't steal heat, the drafts will try. Fire isn't your enemy. Wind is. You're lying there finally still. The blanket is thick enough. The bed is lifted off the ground. And yet sleep won't come. Because the stone walls are sweating, and thin drafts keep slicing across your neck. Not strong enough to feel like a gust, just sharp enough to steal heat without being noticed. This is how damp cold works. Moist air plus movement equals heat loss that never stops. Medieval houses weren't sealed. They breathed. Every crack, every joint in the wood was a doorway for wind. So families didn't try to heat the whole room. That was a losing game. They shrank the space instead. They hung cloth around the bed. Curtains, heavy textiles, layered fabric, turning the bed into a small chamber inside a larger, colder house. Less air to warm. Less wind to fight. When drafts are blocked, convection slows. Heat stops being pulled off your skin every time the air shifts. This isn't speculation. Bed hangings are documented throughout the medieval period, used for warmth and privacy and surviving bed curtains in museum collections mostly later, prove the object itself was real, not a story. A. Built Solution They were built solutions. You turn up the heater and hope the room behaves. They pulled fabric tight and told the wind not tonight. But even with the ground cut and the wind locked out, one problem remained. The cold still hunted the edges of the body. And that's where the system moves next. Privacy doesn't keep you alive. People do. One room, one sleeping corner, several bodies breathing in the dark. There's a fire somewhere in the house, but the warmth you feel doesn't come from it. It comes from the person next to you. In damp, cold bodies lose heat faster. Moist air pulls warmth off skin. Cold surfaces drink it away on contact, and children lose it fastest of all. So medieval families didn't spread out at night. 
They closed ranks. They slept close, shoulder-to-shoulder legs, overlapping blankets pulled tight around everyone. The smallest, the sick, the young were placed in the center. Adults formed the outer ring, not by instinct alone, by experience. When bodies press together, the surface area exposed to cold shrinks. Heat stops bleeding outward. It circulates inward, protecting the core. This kind of sleeping doesn't leave neat artifacts. Archaeology won't show you outlines of bodies in a bed, but social history does. Shared rooms. Few beds. Whole families sleeping as one unit because heating space wasn't an option. You sleep alone wrapped in layers of manufactured insulation. They used what they already had, warmth, that didn't burn out, didn't go cold, didn't need fuel. But even a human heat mass needs help. Because warmth shared still leaks away if the layers around it fail. And that's why the system keeps building one layer at a time. But bodies can only share warmth if the house stops feeding damp into the air. So the next lock isn't on the bed. It's under your feet. A clean floor doesn't keep you warm. A packed one does. You step inside, and it's not bare earth under your feet. It's a thick layer of dried plants, rushes, reeds, cut grasses, spread wall to wall. Because the ground never stops working against you, wet soil breathes moisture upward hour after hour. Cold and damp together turn the whole room into a slow refrigeration box. You can raise the bed, you can block the wind, but if the floor stays exposed, the cold keeps leaking into everything. So medieval households didn't leave the ground naked, they covered it. They laid down floor litter organic material replaced again and again, then swept the old layer away and packed a new one on top. Not to decorate, to manage moisture. That plant layer trapped dirt and damp below the surface. It kept feet drier. It slowed cold air pooling at ground level. It added one more insulating layer between the wet earth and the people living above it. This isn't guesswork. Environmental archaeology reports from York describe mineralized tube-like plant structures, very likely rush stems found in floor sweepings. The conclusion is careful but clear. Rushes were traditional floor coverings used deliberately, then cleaned out and replaced. You mop your floor and hope it dries. They sealed the moisture in place and stopped it climbing any higher. They weren't cleaning. They were packing the damp away underfoot. And once the ground was wrapped, the system could finally start holding. But dry floors alone don't keep bodies warm at night. The layers still had to move upward. Heavy doesn't mean warm. Air does. You pull the blanket closer, it feels almost weightless. And yet the warmth holds. Like the heat isn't coming from the fabric, but from the air trapped inside it. That's the problem medieval people were solving. In damp cold, anything heavy gets wet. Anything wet stops insulating. What you need is something that stays dry longer and holds as much air as possible right against the body. In some parts of Scandinavia among people who could afford it, the answer was down. Feathers not laid flat, but stuffed. Packed allowed to puff back up. Down doesn't fight the cold directly. It cages air. Thousands of tiny pockets slow heat loss, cut convection, and keep warmth from being pulled away with every shift of damp air. This isn't a modern idea dropped into the past. Archaeological analysis from the boat graves at Velskerda in Sweden shows warriors laid on bedding, filled with feathers, identified through microscopic study, not guesswork. Popular summaries in Archaeology magazine describe the same finds down bedding over a thousand years old, doing exactly what it still does today. You buy a synthetic duvet rated for a temperature number. They buried their warmth in air and feathers and let the night press down on it. But even the best insulating layer only works if the rest of the system holds. Because air can be trapped or it can be stolen and the cold is still looking for gaps. Soft isn't the point. Wind is. You run your hand over fur. It's warm, but that's not why it matters. What it does best is stop air from moving. In rough houses, cold didn't just sit in the room. It traveled. Drafts slid along the floor, crept up legs cut across the neck like a thin blade. In damp, cold wind plus moisture means heat loss that never rests. 
So medieval people didn't try to wrap the whole body evenly. They targeted the weak points, feet, neck, shoulders. They laid fur at the foot of the bed, pulled it up around the collar, used it as an outer skin not to heat, but to block. Fur works because it holds a layer of still air right against the body. Leather beneath it resists wind penetration. Together they slow convection where it hurts most. This matters most in the north. Because fur rarely survives in the ground, modern science had to step in. Using paleoproteomics, researchers identified animal fur, including beaver, on high-status Viking burial goods in Denmark. The fur was real specific deliberate. The National Museum of Denmark is clear about this fur wasn't decoration. It was a critical material used across daily life, including coverings. You buy windproof fabric rated for a storm. They placed fur where the wind tried to bite first and told it to stop there. But even a locked edge can't hold warmth alone because the system still needs one final move, not another layer, but a smaller world. You don't get into bed, you get inside it. Wood creaks, a panel slides shut, and suddenly the night gets smaller. The house around you is wide and leaky. Cold air moves freely, drafts roam. Trying to heat that space would be throwing warmth into the dark. So they didn't. They built a room inside the room. The box bed or cupboard bed was a wooden enclosure around the mattress, often set near the hearth, sometimes shared, not luxurious, strategic. By closing the panels, you slash the volume of air that needs warming. Wood slows drafts. The enclosed shape cuts convection. Your body does the rest. The heat you produce stays close. It accumulates. It stops being stolen every time the air shifts. This solution shows up clearly in material culture. At Kennexton Farmhouse in Wales, a 17th century rural home preserved at St. Fagan's, the box bed is documented as typical for the period, not a curiosity, a working answer to cold, damp houses. Yes, it's later than the medieval period, but the logic is the same. When materials don't change, fast solutions don't either. You turn on central heating and warm rooms no one's in. They warmed a space just big enough to survive the night. This wasn't another trick. It was the system closing in on itself. Ground blocked. Moisture packed away. Wind locked out. Heat shared. Air trapped. And one small wooden room holding it all together. They didn't beat winter with a miracle. They beat it with seven quiet decisions. They cut the cold off at the ground, packed the damp where it couldn't climb, locked the wind before it touched skin, shared heat instead of wasting it, trapped air, layer by layer, piece by piece. None of it worked alone. Every choice depended on the others, because in damp cold, you don't die from one mistake. You fade when heat keeps finding ways out. Medieval families understood this without formulas or theories. They felt it every night. So, they didn't chase warmth. They closed exits. And, slowly, carefully, they turned a wet, hostile house into a place where a body had a chance to warm back up before morning. Not comfort. Not ease. Just enough control to survive another long night. And sometimes that's all a system is.